Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Read My Reads. So this is going to be part two of my March slash April wrap up. I did part one uh, about a week ago. I don't know when I'm posting these things. But anyways, uh, here's part two. Hope you all enjoy. The next book I read is A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martine. So this book takes place in like a universe where there's this empire and this empire controls most of the planets. You know, basically has colonized pretty much everyone. And so there is one part of this universe that the empire has not colonized and that is LaSalle Station. This is a group of like station so they don't have their own planet um an independent station and basically the ambassador from LaSalle to uh Texacallan the empire uh passed away um we don't know how and so our main character Mahit is basically made the new ambassador and like sent to Texacallan on LaSalle station they also have these really cool like technology called image lines and basically it's the entire mental image of like a person and you insert it into another person so they basically have all of that person's like wisdom and knowledge and basically like that person is living in their heads so um for example like if you're a pilot your entire life is recorded so then when you die all of that knowledge that you gain gets placed in the head of another pilot and then that same thing happens and you have long, long image lines on the cell station, which is super cool. And so um, Mahit gets sent with the image line of the last ambassador, but it is 10 years out of date since he hasn't come back to the station to update it in the past 10 years. So she is basically sent to uh, this empire um, with the goal, with this out of date image line. line, uh, doesn't know what happened to her predecessor, um, trying to make sure that this country, this empire, doesn't like colonize her station, try and keep them independent. Um, so there's a lot of political intrigue in this book and it's really, really cool. Um, I really, really enjoyed A Memory Called Empire. Um, there's a lot of big words and cool technology and in it. And the Texacallan um, like culture is really, really interesting. They they use like poetry and fun language things. Um, and there's so much political intrigue in here. Um, it was super, super cool. I really enjoyed this book. The thing I really liked about this book is how like Mahit's feelings toward the empire were so complex and felt so realistic to me. Like she grew up in this station where they consumed so much Texacallan like news and art and culture and she's been studying it her whole life that her dream has been to go to Texacallan um and she like loves it she loves all of their culture and everything but like she also is at war with herself and also like hates the Texacallan um empire because they are literally an empire who's trying to colonize her station and um like, even though she loves their culture and has learned so much about it, she, like, never can really belong there because they all think of her as a barbarian because she's not part of the empire. And it's just, I feel like it captures, like, the immigrant experience really well. These complex feelings toward being in a country that's not quite your own. Um, and, like, loving it, but also, like, not feeling a part of it. I just, I thought that was so well done and I'm really excited to read the next book and um, get more info on what's gonna happen. I highly recommend A Memory Called Empire, five stars. The next book I read is Supernova by Marissa Meyer. Uh, this is the third book in the Renegades trilogy. I read the first two about t a year ago, um, but basic summary on this trilogy. Uh, this is taking place in like a dystopia future of America where uh, superheroes are a thing um, and basically there is a superhero group called the Renegades who lead all the superheroes and then there are folks there are anarchist superheroes who don't like the re Renegades leadership they don't believe in a lot of what they're doing and they want to create all this anarchy and let people live how they want to live um, 
So we have two main characters. One of them is Adrian, who's the son of two of the heads of the Renegades. And he basically uh, disguises himself in an alternate superhero identity and like goes around uh, saving people and stuff, even though that's technically not part of the Renegades official way they're supposed to do things. And then there is Nova, who is the niece of Ace Anarchy, who's like the main anarchist guy, um, and he, she basically makes this plot to sneak into the Renegades and like infiltrate them and take them down from the inside. Um, so that's basic summary of the entire series. It's a fun series. I enjoyed it a lot so far. I was really excited about this third book because there's so much shit that had it was has been building up from the first two books that like when I started the third book like I was loving the first third of it like I was flying through it I was like this is so interesting like shit's going down and oh my god these plot threads are finally coming together and I'm so excited to see what's gonna happen but then like in the middle of the book there is kind of a tonal shift um and it like slows down a lot um, and it kind of gets a little boring in the middle. I feel like it took away a lot of the stakes of everything that was going to happen. Um, and then the ending of the series was good, but it was kind of what I expected. Um, there wasn't any big reveals or anything. I was just kind of like, yeah, that's how I expected this series to end. So overall, like, I thought it was a solid book. I just, like, wish... Um, Marissa Meyer kept up that like energy that I had for the first third of the book for the rest of the novel. Overall though, it's a fun series. Um, I gave it, I gave it four stars. It's solid. It's good. Uh, easy to pass your time with. So, um, yeah, I liked it. <laughs> Next book I read is Mistborn, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. This is my third or fourth reread of this novel. I am reading it with the uh, folks on the Cosmere Unbounded read-along. So if you don't know what that is, check out down below. But it is so fun to reread Mistborn. It's been a while since I've reread it and I just, I love these books so much. If you don't know what Mistborn is about, it's kind of like a heist novel in this world where um, the bad guy has won. So the Lord Ruler is this bad guy who basically controls this entire empire and he's been doing it for thousands of years and it's like the land is awful there are like slaves um the sky everywhere and there's like ash falling from the sky and all these awful awful things um and this group of thieves decides that they want to take down the lord ruler and kill him um the head of this group is Kelsier, who is a Mistborn, aka he has the ability to um, have all this power from different metals, um, and he wants to kill the uh, Lord Ruler. And then our other main character, Finn, is a thief on the streets, um, and Kelsier discovers that she is also Mistborn, and she gets roped into this entire plot. Um, so I love it. It's so good. I love Vin as a character so much. Don't know what else to say about it. If you haven't read Mistborn, what you doing? Go read Mistborn. It's great. So that was all of the books I read in the month of March. So now we're really quickly going to go through my four books I read in April. Um, the first book I read in April was Lord by Alexandra. I said Lord. Lore by Alexandra Brecken. So this book takes place in our world, but the Greek gods and goddesses are basically forced to be mortal for one week every seven years and then during that one week if you kill them you get their like power and you become a god yourself sort of thing so there are these whole lines of families who like train and fight to become a greek god or goddess or they like train and fight to get the head of that family to become a Greek god or goddess and steal all their powers. Um, so our main character is Lore um, and it's the start of one of these seven year things and basically when she was a child her family was like brutally murdered and now she's out on her own not participating in this uh, you know hunt for their powers but she 
meets one of her childhood friends unexpectedly and then the goddess Athena shows up on her door and she makes a deal and gets sucked into this one week um, thing of fighting gods and stealing their powers and blah blah blah. Um, yeah, I didn't like this book. <laughs> it was so confusing. Like there was so many houses and so many gods and goddesses and I could not keep track of any of them. Um, the also the plot was kind of boring. Like I was expecting like Hunger Games excitement because that's what it sold it as. But like it was literally lore goes to one place to find some information. Then a god shows up. They attack she kills them, they go to another place, God shows up, attacks, kills them, go to another, it was just like too repetitive and boring and I didn't understand what was going on most of the time. There were some cute side characters which was fun. The ending of this book, oh my god, what bullshit. <laughs> it was so bad, I don't even know how to say how bad it was. Um, it just, it was not great at all. Uh, so yeah, I ended up giving Lore two stars. It's not a horrible book. Like, I can read it and I don't hate it, but it wasn't good either, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, Lore. We're gonna blame Lore for the lack of books I read in April because, yeah. <laughs> so the next book I read in April is Air Awakens by Lise Kova. Uh, this is one of my buddy reads for the Shell Space Discord server, um, as it is a self-published novel. And it follows our main character who's like a librarian um, and one day she realizes that she has like air magic um, after saving the life of the prince. Uh, she realizes she has air magic and it's like her training or like accepting the fact that she has magic because in this world while magic is like acceptable it's kind of frowned upon by like regular people. Um, so it's like her discovering magic and being friends with this prince um there's not like a crazy amount of plot but there's it's there's some pretty cool magic up in here like the magic system I thought was really interesting um it's like based off of the four elements I really liked the imagery and the writing style in this novel it's more of a fantasy romance novel and I was not a fan of the romance um which honestly not surprising it has one of those tropes of like a really asshole guy um and I just don't like that. Oh, I just like nice guys um in novels when there's like an asshole guy I'm like girl why you want to be with him he's a jerk he's a jerk to everyone just because he's not a jerk to you because he likes you but he's a jerk don't be with him and so I didn't care about the romance it wasn't horribly done like I've read way way worse YA romances and this one was fine but I just wasn't into it um and so that's like a lot of the book um I thought the ending of the book was pretty good like there was a cool plot twist I think the next book's gonna be more interesting but I don't know yet if I want to continue on with it or not um like when I read finished the first book with the like climax of an ending I was like oh yeah I'm definitely gonna read the next one um, and I've heard a lot of the tropes get more subverted in the next book, but I don't actually know anymore because I have so many books I want to read that this one's definitely going to fall on the back burner for now. It was cute, it was fun, um, but nothing I was in love with. Uh, so I ended up giving that three stars. The next book I read is Winds of Strife by Yuji Gutman. Uh, this is another shelf published in Buddy Read pick of the month. And this uh, novel takes place in this world where there is a magic system based on emotions. Basically each different emotion can create a like different magic power and in this world like women or witches um, who can control this power are like persecuted because they believe that the women are causing the night to lengthen and are trying to get the world enveloped into this like internal darkness. Um, and so uh, women are persecuted but the men are allowed to you know control this power and so our main character is Nye who is a harbinger um and he basically hunts down witches but he's like secretly against the king um and like trying to overthrow the king and let witches you know do them. I think the magic system in this book is amazing the world building is so cool um, and the plot is very very engaging like right off the bat right when you start the book um, 
like the prologue will just get you super super interested and then the rest of the book has a very solid plot as well. The thing that I didn't particularly like about this novel were the characters. So Nye, our main character, is a really really morally great protagonist. Like he's an awful person. Um, I thought he, I like knew he was going to be morally gray, but I thought he was going to be morally gray in terms of the fact that he's like, you know, part of this organization that kills witches, but he's like trying to overturn them. So maybe that's like the morally gray of like, yeah, he, you know, he's killed people. Um, but that's not, that's not the morally gray. He's like abusive and manipulative and he's just such an awful, awful person and I did not like him. Um, like he's an interesting character to read about, but I did not like him. And I'm a character driven reader um, so I definitely don't mind when there are morally gray characters. I mean I love I love my crows. Y'all know this. They all morally gray as fuck but I still root for them. Um, I couldn't really find anyone in this book to root for and I think that was my main issue. There's like these witches who live in a house and I was like oh maybe I'll want to root for them. They seem interesting but I wasn't a fan of any of them. I thought Ivy the princess in the novel I was like really excited to get to know her but we didn't really get too much of her. No one I was really like yes rooting for. I was just kind of like reading about them. I didn't really feel super emotional toward anyone. Um, so I think that was my biggest issue with this novel. Otherwise it's like really good. Um, like the like I mentioned the world building, the plot, the uh, magic system all really cool really solid um and so i just wish i personally was more attached to the characters because i'm a character driven reader um so i ended up giving this novel uh 3.75 stars like almost there for four if i liked a character <laughs> and the last book i read in the month of april is the well of ascension by brandon sanderson the second book in the mistborn trilogy again i read this with the um cosmere unbounded read along and we're doing a live show on it uh this weekend so definitely um check that out where i'll talk a lot more in depth about my thoughts um if you haven't read the first mistborn book I don't really know how to describe this one to you without hella spoilers. Um, so I'm not going to do a plot summary, but oh my god, I just, I love the second Miss Form book. There's like, oh, the plot twist always gets me every single time. I loved it so much. There's so many cool things that are happening in this novel. So many cool things. And every single time I'm like so into it, I get really, really engaged. Um, and even now when I know everything that's going on, I'm just like so excited to read it. Um, there's a lot of cool things in Mistborn. Uh, this one though does have my least favorite thing of the Mistborn trilogies, a.e. the love triangle. Ugh. It's like, sorry Brandon, I really hate this love triangle so much. But other than that, I love The Well of Ascension. It's such a good book. So yeah, those were the 15 books I read throughout March and April. Hopefully this wrap up isn't too long otherwise I might split it halfway through. We'll see. But thank you all so much for watching. Bye!